I'd like to call the 16th meeting of the 2015-2016 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. The biggest communication problem is we do not listen to understand, we listen to reply. Thank you very much for that thought. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? 16 present. Thank you. The next stand, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from our 11-2 meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, will the clerk please, or rather just we'll do a simple voice vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next is resignations. City Attorney. First one is from uh, Alderperson Jody Vanderweel uh, to the Mayor and the Common Council, informing you that she will be resigning her seat as Alderperson in District 2 as of December 31st. 2015. <laughs> and the second is a uh, resignation from Rebecca Clark from the uh, Sheboygan Sustainable Task Force. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Reluctantly, I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to mayor's appointments, city attorney. First is an appointment from uh, the mayor submitting the following appointment for your consideration, David Cookook, to be appointed to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force to fill the unexpired term of Rebecca Clark, whose term expires 4 16 Thank you. And the other is uh, from the mayor submitting the following appointment for your consideration, Sammy Yang to be appointed to the Senior Activity Center Commission to fill the unexpired term of Mary Ryan, whose term expires 4 16 Those appointments will lie over. Uh, next is a, a program called Dogs to Dog Tags, and Alderman Carlson set this up for us, and Daryl, if you'd please introduce our guest. Yes, uh, tonight we're gonna have a chance to learn about a, a great organization called Dogs to Dog Tags. It's uh, very fitting considering last week we um, celebrated two things. One was the, uh, the Marine Corps birthday. We turned 240 years old um, on Tuesday and on Wednesday we celebrated uh, Veterans Day. And then also if we wanna backtrack a little bit um, more, it's September we nationally we looked at um, September as a Suicide Awareness um, Prevention Month and everything this organization is doing and is going to do um, will help reduce the number of veterans that commit suicide on a daily basis. Right now we're averaging about 22 veterans that uh, do decide in their lives. So um, I'd like to introduce uh, Tori Willitson, uh, and he will um, talk a little bit more about his organization. Please step up to the mic. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Council. Um, my Tori, name is Tori Willitson. Tori, can you pull the mic up a little bit? That's oh, great. Thank you. Loud. <clears throat> my name is Tori Willitson. I am local. I'm from Sheboygan Falls. I graduated from Sheboygan Falls High School. Um, in the last five years, um, I've spent time uh, with the Marine Corps and with the Army, the 101st, the 82nd, the 10th, and the 4th ID. Um, I was headhunted as a dog trainer to train military working dogs to sniff IEDs. And I deployed with the Marine Corps, the 7th Marines, to Afghanistan. Um, it was uh, an especially kinetic area. Um, I lost a, a couple of guys, a couple of dogs. And one that I didn't lose, we, this is kind of what started the whole program that I'm going to tell you about a little bit. I gave you guys some information about it just so I didn't have to stand up here for the whole 15 minutes because you guys have a lot of stuff to do. Um, I decided to come home and work it from here. Um, Chris got blown up on June 13th. Um, and we were having a hard time getting his dog back to him at Balboa. It took me over a month and a lot of red tape to get him back. And I knew the best thing for him to keep him motivated was the bond that him and his dog created uh, with each other through the training. I spent all of 2012 with them and the deployment. Um, so between myself working up my side in Afghanistan 
and his father retiring from the Air Force and still in contact with the general that was in charge of flights going in and out of Bastion, um, we ended up getting his dog, Harley, uh, to him at Balboa, and um, it changed his life. She got to stay at Balboa with him. Um, she was there in his bed with him at times. Um, dogs and veterans um, have a bond, and especially when they work with them. Um, you spend that much time with an animal and taking care of that animal, going through the training, um, using them to keep your platoon or your squad or your fire team safe. Um, you create a, an, an enormous amount of respect for each other. And what I noticed was when we come home, the dogs get taken away from the guys, and it's some of the hardest things that they can deal with. Um, I helped a lot of my guys get their dogs when they retired, and they say it was the best thing that ever happened to them, that it meant more to them getting their dog that they were in battle with than a lot of other things that happened in their lives at that time. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm putting this program together, um, we have a high rate of um, shelters that euthanize dogs. It's, it's just a fact of life. It, it's how it is. Shelters get overwhelmed. Um, they have nowhere else to go with them, and they end up getting put down. So between my love for the canine and my respect for the gentleman that I went to Afghanistan with, I decided that I wanted to do something for the suicide rate. Um, I can't go into a lot of it, but I just received the latest um, Department of Defense suicide rates through all forces. Um, it didn't get any better. In fact, it got worse. I can't go into it because um, it's actually, the only reason I got it is because I still hold the security. <coughs> And he gave it to me to, to talk to you guys about that. Um, this problem is not going to get better unless we do something about it. Sheboygan County also has one of the highest suicide rates in the state of Wisconsin. I was just at Jake's Cafe for a suicide prevention meeting. And um, the doctors that spoke um, were so impressed with the fact that the city of Sheboygan showed up. It was standing room only. Um, and there's a lot of support around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take dogs that are in shelters, um, I'm going to train them, and I'm going to provide them to soldiers and Marines and airmen that need some assistance. There's a comfort that comes from animals, whether it's canine or equestrian, that provides something that they can't get somewhere else. And the fact that I know this works because I've done it already and I've seen the changes in the guys that I provided animals for. I decided I wanted to do that back here in my hometown and start it off. Um, I thank Daryl for letting me come here and speak to you guys about it. Um, you do have some information. I'm discussing um, what I can potentially do with some national representatives of major companies. Um, but I'm, I just wanted to let everybody know that we're out there. We have a web page. We have a Facebook page. We'll be um, needing people that would like to be fosters of dogs and potentially come into and train with us so we can actually do evaluations on canines. Um, the VA is doing as best they can. And the gunny that was with me in Afghanistan is now in charge of Naval Veterans Affairs. He was, he was one of the guys that was shot when I was in Afghanistan, and one of my dog handlers actually had to get him to the truck. So he's very passionate about that. He's now a master sergeant. He works out of the Pentagon. Um, I have the master sergeant that was in charge of all military working dogs for the Pentagon, who's on my board of directors, who's behind us on this, and I also have the first sergeant that was in charge of my safety. Because when you go over there as a civilian, you're not armed. I was not armed. I was entrusting these young men with my life every time I traveled in my AO. And I had five different forward operation bases that were in a very kinetic area that I traveled at. So I know and I lived with and I got very close to these guys and I know what these dogs meant to them. And I know what these dogs here can, can do for people when it comes to suicide prevention. So I just took the best of both worlds. I want to save some dogs and I want to save some lives because this has to be addressed. Um, I thank you guys very much for your time. If you have any questions, you have my business card, and uh, you can get a hold of me at any time you want. Thank you.
Tori, thank you very much for that presentation and uh, what you're trying to do for our veterans. We really appreciate it. Um, this last uh, Wednesday was Veterans Day and I had the privilege of uh, attending with uh, six of the other aldermen the uh, ceremony that was put together by North High and, uh, and Mike Liebelt. They had a great program. And it was really neat because they brought several of the students forward that had made a commitment to go into the service and, uh, and highlighted uh, their, uh, their direction in that uh, area for their career. There was also a veteran service out at uh, Sunny Ridge. And it's great to see this uh, community uh, doing what they do to support our vets uh, during Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, present a proclamation and I'd like to ask uh, Lori Kerwin and Dave Hoffman to come forward. Um, this proclamation, whereas the city of Sheboygan believes that small businesses are the backbone of our economy and the glue that holds our communities together. According to the United States Small Business Administration, there are currently 28 million small businesses in the United States. They represent more than 99% of American companies, create two-thirds of new jobs, and generate half of the private gross domestic products. And whereas small businesses employ one-half of the employees in the private <coughs> sector in the, in the United States, and whereas 93% of the United States consumers believe it's important to, to support small local businesses that they value in their community, 89% agree that locally owned independent businesses contribute positively through paying taxes and providing jobs. And whereas the city of Sheboygan supports local businesses that create jobs, boost, boost our local economy, and preserve our neighborhoods, and whereas local advocacy groups and public and private organizations across the country have endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday, now, therefore, I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do ordain and proclaim Saturday, November 28th as Small Business Saturday in Sheboygan. And I present this proclamation to them. Okay, next we'll move on to the consent agenda. Oh, public forum, I'm sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, public forum this evening, we have four people speaking. First on the list would be Rayanne Schmitz. Rayanne, if you could come up to the mic, please. <coughs> if you want to put the mic, just, yeah, there you go. And if you could state your name and home address, please. Ray Ann Schmitz, 4614 South 15th Street, Sheboygan. Terrific. Then you'll have five minutes. Thank you, um, City Clerk, Mr. Mayor, City Attorney, and members of the Council. Um, once again, I am Ray Ann Schmitz. I'm a city employee, and I've been working in the assessor's office as a residential appraiser since December 2000 which may end on December 31st, 2015, according to a resolution item 5.1 on tonight's agenda. I'm concerned about the future of the city assessor's office and the effects outsourcing of this department will have on the citizens, property owners, various city and county departments. I hope this resolution will be discussed before a decision is made, a well-informed decision, Therefore, I want to share information about the assessor's office as to who we are and what we do. The purpose of the assessor's department is to discover, list, and place a value in all taxable, real, and personal property in the city of Sheboygan in a uniform and equitable manner. We are a service-oriented department and have strived to educate the public on the assessment process. Annually, we maintain property data assessment values for over 17,000 parcels as far as real estate is concerned and over 1,500 personal property accounts. We verify property data by reviewing the interiors and exteriors of properties, process requests for assessment reviews, verify new construction based on building permits issued as well as discover work being done without permits. We complete and file 
the required department reports for the Department of Revenue, such as the assessor's final report, statement of assessment, exempt computer reports, and various statistical reports. We validate and analyze all sales, compare them to the current assessments. We defend the assessment values at the local board of review. Our office has been compliant with the Depor Department of Revenue since 1999. Our office has performed two citywide revaluations as required by the Department of Revenue to remain compliant. Our department is mandated by the state statutes and monitored by the Wisconsin Department of Revenue. Each of the staff members of the assessor's office is required to be certified with the Department of Revenue and must maintain their certifications with continuing education workshops. Currently, there are four members of the assessment staff, but that has not always been the situation. Fifteen years ago, there were six staff members, and today there are four. After the previous assessor left in 2010, our department offered that we could do this with four members as a cost savings to the city. <coughs> As part of your discussion, please consider postponing the outsourcing of the department due to the assessment calendar work. The assessment calendar for processing work is typically from June to May in a maintenance year and not January 1 to December 31. Our calendar begins once the Board of Review adjourns, which is typically held in May or June of each year. At this time, our office is in the middle of our assessment work preparing for the 2016 Board of Review. Also consider reviewing the results from outsourcing that was done in past for the cleaning service, engineering, HR, and IT. Therefore, I ask and I hope you will give this resolution the proper discussion it deserves. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next on our list is Lona Fallon. Talon. I never get it right. Lona, could you give us your full name and home address? Please? Sure, it's Lona Talen, N 11669, State Road 175, Brownsville, Wisconsin. You can go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Vandersteen, Council members, and the public. I'm speaking on the resolution before the Council tonight to outsource the Assessor's Office. Again, my name is Lona Talon, and I am one of your full-time property appraisers for the city of Sheboygan with over 18 years in your assessor's office. I was hired in August of 1997 as a part-time clerk position and received a promotion to a full-time technician in 1998 and another promotion in 2007 to a property appraiser. I have been involved in the last three citywide revaluations for the city of Sheboygan. We were a six-member office in 1999 when we assisted an outside firm. Then in 2006, the revaluation was conducted with the in-house six-member city staff, and the third was for 2014, which was conducted by the four-member staff with some assistance from an outside firm. During the 2006 and 2014 revaluation years, the staff was asked to refrain from taking their vacation time so that we had full staffing during the busy summer months to complete these revaluations in the appropriate time frame. After performing a rough calculation, the city of Sheboygan has invested over 66 years of time into the current employees, and likewise, these employees have invested a combination of over 66 years of experience into Sheboygan. Your Sheboygan Assessor's Office is responsible for the fair and equitable portfolio of properties valued in excess of $2.1 billion. This portfolio includes over 17,000 assessment parcels and over 1,500 locally assessed personal property accounts. Would you want someone who doesn't even live in the community nor have any ties in the community assess your property? We are constantly giving advice to commercial developers and prospective buyers. Some of our fellow employees have come to our office for advice on real estate values in this community. We strive to maintain fair and equitable assessments. It is a common occurrence in our office for some or all of our sta staff to be discussing new construction taking place, or did you see the new siding, roof, or addition on a particular property? or sharing information with our assessment technician about a particular business's location. We are in contact with other city or county departments with any questions, concerns, or comments. 
This shows that we are aware of the happenings in the city of Sheboygan. The assessor's office has provided excellent customer service over the years, which is, which is evident by the written thank you that I personally received from the property owners during the 2014 revaluation. For the 2015 Board of Review, which met in June, there were no complaints, no objections. I am sure that these statistics have already been provided to you by the Chief Financial Officer, the City Assessor, and or other City Hall personnel. Prior to 1998, the Assessor's Office had been closed over the lunch hour. The staff made the decision to flex our lunches to be able to accommodate keeping the office open and available on the lunch hour for better customer service, giving back to the public. Through our years, the members of the Assessor's Office have made suggestions to our supervisors to reduce our hours to a 37.5 hour work week as well as taking furlough days as the state employees had been doing to help reduce the budget. The city has tried outsourcing in the past for the cleaning and engineering departments, but the duties were eventually given back to the city employees. Through the years of 2009 and 2010, the assessor's office was reduced to five members and eventually to the four members where we currently are. When it was announced that the city assessor was retiring, were the various scenarios considered for the assessor's office, such as operating with the three staff members, outsourcing the assessor position only, and other possibilities? It is very disheartening how the assessor's office is held in such low regard by the municipality that we serve. A full-time on-site assessor's office is a valuable resource to your local government and to your local community. <coughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you, Laura. Uh, next is Darcy Biernick. <coughs> Darcy, can you give us your full name and home address, please? Darcy Biernick, W3272 County Road G, oh. Cedar Grove. And you will have five minutes. Hello, my name is Darcy Biernink, and I would like to speak on behalf of the resolution regarding outsourcing the City Assessor's Office. I have been employed with the City Assessor's Office for over 17 years, nine years as a police and fire dispatcher, and the past eight years as an assessment technician in the City Assessor's Office. In those 17 years, I've always felt and been proud to say that the City of Sheboygan is a business that provides services. What is a service? an action of doing work or helping someone. Eliminated people, in this case an entire in-house city assessor's office, is eliminate, eliminating a crucial city service. The city assessor's office prides itself on the service we provide and the relationships that we have developed with citizens and business owners over many, many years that the city assessor's office has been in existence. We have citizens who contact our office and ask for a certain person. Why is that? Because all of us have been at the city assessor's office for several, several years. We have been loyal employees for the city and also to the citizens of Sheboygan. Relationships, loyalty, and trust have been built with the citizens. I understand that there is a budget to be met. I also understand that this is not meant to be personal. But what about the citizens and business owners? The service they have always known will no longer be. So the service the city assessor's office has prided itself on taking is being taken away from them. Why? Maybe to save money? <coughs> we value the citizens and their time, helping them with questions, concerns, and taking the time to educate them about their assessments. The city assessor's office has built a rapport with these individuals and we value that service and loyalty to these individuals. Again, a service taken away from the citizens to save money. Not only does our office work with citizens and business owners, but with other offices. When I began working in the city assessor's office over eight years ago, I was told during my training that the city assessor's office is the hub to other city offices. Again, service comes to mind. The city assessor's office assists other offices with reports and procedures for both in-house matters and also reports on the state level. As you are aware, the city assessor's office is currently working with two software systems. Bridges have been made to bridge important information from the city assessor's office to other city departments. 
to finalize important numbers and to balance reports. Years of orchestrating procedures between departments is over. Services we have provided for years. Now not only is that service being taken away from the citizens, business owners, but also city offices. Again, I do understand that a budget needs to be met, but is outsourcing a service, the city assessor's office, really the answer? To take a service like the in-house city assessor's office away from the citizens and other offices? To me, this seems like a rash decision and needs to be given more thought than merely for the financial aspect. Please consider keeping the city assessor's office in-house rather than outsourcing. If the, city of if the city of Sheboygan truly prides itself on service, then please don't take the service away. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. And next on our list is Joseph Lamb. Joseph? Joseph, can you give us your full name and home address, please? My name is Joseph Lamb, 4010 North 30th Street, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And you um, have five minutes. Go ahead. I'm here representing Mid Lake Softball Organization. This was the second year that we ran uh, the softball, adult softball program for um, the, the city down at Wildwood Complex. And part of our agreement is that we give 25% of our gross revenue back to the city of Sheboygan for park improvements. Um, we put about $6,000 into the park this year in safety issues, new lighting, um, fertilizing the fields, and all this other stuff. Um, Community Bank and Trust, now Wisconsin Bank and Trust, provided another $5,000 cash to the city of Sheboygan. And I am here to present another check for $14,000 to the city of Sheboygan to be used towards park improvements at Wildwood Softball Complex. Thank you. Joe, we appreciate all the great things you've done out there in keeping uh, softball a great game to play for a lot of teams. How many teams did you have this year? We had 89, I think 89 teams this year. That's excellent. Wow. Thank you again. You're appreciate welcome. It. Thank you. Okay, then we'll go on to the consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support, and that'll include items 2.3 through 2.18. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to communications. There's one communication that will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. Then, under reports of officers, um, items 4.1 through 4.8 will be referred to various committees. <clears throat> under resolutions, item 5.1 will lie over. 5.2 will be referred to the Finance Committee. And under reports of committees, item 6.1 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole, to whom was referred resolution 93 of 1516 by Alderman Carlson and Bellinger, drafting necessary ordinance, resolutions, and regulations so as to eliminate the position of Chief Administrative Officer uh, effective August 23rd of 2016 and shift the duties and responsibilities for the Chief Administrative Officer to the Mayor, Finance Director, Comptroller, City Treasurer, and recommends that the document be placed on file. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the committee report. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll?
13 ayes, three noes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole to whom was referred General Ordinance Number 33 of 1516 by Alderman Carlson and Bellinger, reestablishing the salary schedule for the Office of Alderperson commencing in the Council Year 27 <coughs> to 2018, and recommends that the document be placed on file. Alderman Carlson. Once again, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the committee report. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on 6.2? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred pursuant to RO number 168 of 1516 by the city clerk, various license applications. Recommends that the beverage operator license application 0925 be denied based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the license activity, his record as a repeat law violator, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Juwan Bonner here? He is not. We had invited him um, twice to our meeting and he did not appear. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <coughs> Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 168 of 1516 by the clerk submitting various licenses and recommends that beverage operator license application 0919 be denied based upon her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application, her record of violations related to the licensed activity, her record as a repeat law violator, and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. I think I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Okay. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Megan Smith here? Uh, same thing with her. We, did, we invited her to, on two separate occasions and she did not appear. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.5 is an RC by finance to whom is referred resolution number 95 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish an appropriation for the A Street Bridge accident repairs and funding for engineering cylinder repairs, establish revenue and appropriation for damage fees and received, and establish revenue appropriation for EAB urban forestry grant from the DNR and recommends that the re resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.6 .6 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole to whom is referred Charter Ordinance Number 1 of 1516 by Alderman Carlson and Bellinger being subject to the Home Rule provisions of Section 66.0101 of the Wisconsin Statutes to reduce the number of alder persons in the City of Sheboygan from 16 to 10 by the 2017-2018 council year and recommends that the attached substitute charter ordinance be passed. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and pass the substitute charter ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Heideman. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm not going to support this. I've had a little bit more time to uh, think about this and 
uh, as far as reducing the size of the council without any strategy, without any uh, formation of what the <coughs> committees are going to be like, I think it's really putting the cart before the horse. It's like, why do we need to pass this? It's going to be a year away. Why not take, some, take a look at it, formulate a, um, uh, a, a, the, um, I guess the committee structure and, and what the responsibilities of those 10 people are going to be? Uh, so I'm not going to support it. I'd rather, in turn, just hold this document until after something comes back from strategic planning. Thank you for those comments, Alderman Heidemann. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you kind of alluded to it there, but a, a 6.10 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole, as requested by Alderperson Boren, uh, requesting that the strategic fiscal planning meet and come back with a report on the committee structure by March. I, I think that does satisfy um, any concerns that anyone may have in terms of the structure. Um, I think voting on this tonight is, is a great idea. And uh, it kind of forces us to do the uh, committee restructure. Otherwise, we'll probably just drag our feet like we have done in the past. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none. Oh, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just for clarification on the do on the document here, it says uh, I, I can't read it. Uh, Seventeen and eighteen, I think it is. But the the uh, the uh, um, document that we pass a substitute is for we're going to be voting on uh, 18 and 19 is correct. correct correct okay thank you <clears throat> any other discussion would the clerk please call the roll in Twelve eyes, four noes. Motion passes. Item 6.7 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 88 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond, Carlson, Donahue, and Wolf, ordering the 2016 budget appropriations for the city funds and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Item 6.8 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 89 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond, Koth, Carlson, Donahue, and Wolf. Ordering the 2016 budget appropriations and the 2015 tax levy for use during the calendar year of 2016. It recommends that the attached substitute resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Once again, I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? The substitute resolution you're re passing. Sorry, my apologies. Yes. That's okay. Thanks. I still second it. Okay, thanks. Okay, got that squared away. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes, three noes. Motion passes. Item 6.9 will be will lie over. Uh, 6.10 will be referred to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee or under ordinances. Uh, ordinances 7.1 through 7.3 will lie over. And item 7.4 will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Next is uh, matters laid over. Item 8.1 is... RO number 178 of 15616 by the Chief Administrative Officer submitting the listing of estimated unreserved fund balance at 121315 and the outstanding debt as of 123115. Uh, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll?
15 ayes, one no. Motion passes. Items, item 8.2 is a resolution number 92 of 15 to 16 by Alderman Hammond, Koth, Donahue, and Wolf, authorizing transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish revenue and appropriation for the U.S. Department of <coughs> Housing and Urban Development Community Black Grant funding. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 16 ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other matters received after the council agenda was published. City Attorney. 9.1 is an RO. Sorry, 9.1 is an RO. Uh, by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2015 and June 30, 2017. That'll go to the Law and Licensing Committee. 9.2 is an RO from the city clerk submitting the Sheboygan County apportionment sheets for 2015 levying of taxes. <coughs> That'll be referred to the Finance Committee. 9.3 is an RO uh, by the city clerk submitting a notice of injury or circumstances for Braden J. Sheely, minor son of Brian J. Sheely, and Faith C. Danbrova. We referred to the Finance Committee. 9.4 is a resolution by Alderperson Bellinger uh, accepting 1222 North 10th Street for $1 <coughs> for rehabilitation and resale from the Jack Schumacher Trust. That would be referred to the City Planning Commission. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We'll stand adjourned.